Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played today. Now I was playing as black here, I played the Karo Khan defense. My open started off with d4, I played c6. Uh, open goes for the big center as always. Whenever you play c6, you will expect a move like e4 by the opponent trying to acquire and gain all the controlling squares uh, to uh, in the center. And then I respond with d5. Now opponent can take here, becomes the exchange variation, can advance the pawn, which becomes the advanced variation, or can develop the knight onto c3. These three are the primary moves when you play the Karo Khan, and that is the main line. Uh, but the most challenging line is the advanced variation, and that's what we enter here after e5. Now I develop the bishop onto f5. Uh, you always want to put your bishop out of this pawn chain and then play pawn to e6. Of course, you cannot play bishop to g4 because queen is already controlling that square. And you cannot go on h3 as well because it can be taken. So the only right move to develop the bishop uh, before closing this pawn chain uh, is to play bishop onto f5. And that's what I do. Uh, here my opponent plays uh, bishop to d3, trying to go for bishop exchange. And now there are a couple of ideas here. A, uh, you can exchange, which is the best move as well. Or you can even come back and let your opponent trade. Because if that happens, you can take back with the h-file pawn. And then suddenly you will have some good attack eventually once you play pawn forward. Get your queen out sometime. And that file can be used as an advantage. So supp suppose a move like knight f3. And then you can play pawn to e6. And now uh, the structure is not bad for black either. Yes, there are double pawns, but this is open edge file. And once my open castles, which is the best move as well, uh, you can certainly make sure to use this file some point of the time in future. Uh, if bishop comes out, you have ideas of getting your queen onto b6, hitting the pawn, a uh, couple of pawns actually, and then maybe play pawn c5, trying to break open from the c file, get your knight out, get the rook on the c file, and play on the queen side. Uh, simultaneously, the edge file would always work in your favor. The other alternative can be you uh, expand on the king side, develop the knight, put your queen out, and then castle on the queen side. So either ways, you will have a decent enough of uh, gameplay in your favor. Now let's go back in the game, where after bishop on f5, my I took on the bishop, opponent takes back with the queen, and then I play e6. Now this is more solid. And after uh, move number five, we are in equal position. That's what we want from an opening. Uh, if you see here, uh, black has got the majority of center control, but uh, white has got the majority of uh, control in the center, but black is not also lagging behind, taking the control of light squares. And since I've traded off the light squares, this bishop is much stronger. Now this is dark square bishop and will take control of the dark squares. Uh, and my light square bishop is no more a problem because I traded off with my open light square bishop. So after knight to e2, I get my knight to d7, preparing to go for c5 next, trying to have a pawn break. And I will um, be able to put my bishop on the right diagonal, get my rook onto c8. And this would be an, an amazing uh, game from there on. Here my opponent plays a3, preventing uh, bishop b4, which was not part of my plan though. But a3 is passive in the beginning. Uh, but uh, most likely, if he would have just gone for castling, uh, then it makes more sense because anyways, now bishop uh, b4 won't make any sense and you are making progress in the game as well. But my opponent goes for a3 uh, and a3 doesn't make sense at all because even if you have, would have developed your knight and I put the bishop here, you can just play pawn forward and I have to move my bishop backwards now again and that's bad because I'm just moving the same piece again and again in the opening. So after a3, I went with c5 as my plan was to break open the c file. Here my opponent plays c3. Now whenever c3 is played, you don't want to capture because after uh, both the players exchange, uh, yes, the c file has opened up, but you don't gain anything out of it because the opponent will quickly castle. And once castling is done, you cannot even take the bishop, uh, which is there on the c file. Bishop will also develop. And suddenly you will not feel the right situation because then queen can also come in on to b5, uh, hitting and pinning your knight maybe, and even attacking the pawn on b7. So why to complex the situation? Or rather, let, let this complexity be there itself. So pawn to c5 is a very uh, 
a crucial move and you should not over exceed your pawns here right now because then pawn forward open can just put the queen back and then try to break open from here as well so just let the tension remain there and continue developing i played a6 here preventing queen to b5 in in the future open develops knight to d2 and i went with queen b6 myself hitting the pawn which doesn't make any sense but i am threatening to take as well maybe and after i take i can get my bishop here as well lots of ideas if of course open takes with the knight if the open takes with the pawn then i'm not doing anything maybe my queen is not very much utilized there but i wanted to just play on the queen side for the time being here my open plays knight to f3 and i get my knight on e7 preparing to go to f5 with my knight uh here my opponent saw that coming and plays g4 himself preventing knight f5 uh not letting me develop naturally and if i now go to go with knight on to g6 uh knight is kind of stuck there i cannot go on to h4 my opponent can take i cannot go on to f4 my opponent can take so my knight would be pretty useless there so there's no point putting the knight there uh here i played h6 preventing a move like bishop coming to uh, g5 here my opponent plays h4 trying to expand on the king side now looking at the situation that my king side pieces are not developed and he can take advantage of with the attack but what that does is my queen is already on the queen side and you haven't castled on either side of the board uh you cannot certainly castle on the queen side because the attack can come in very quickly uh and if you castle on the king side you have already expanded the pawns too much so that is already weakening so you should not be expanding the pawns without uh making sure what your game plan is of course if you want to put your king in the center that does make sense keep your king in the center and expand from both the sides uh but then if you are if you are willing to cast at some point of time you should be making sure that uh, one of the sides are pretty much secure here knight comes to c6 uh, trying to improve position of my knight maybe willing to develop the bishop next so that we can uh, trade off the dark square bishop as well uh and maybe just going with knight a5 and then to uh, b3 trying to get, hit the rook and the bishop simultaneously so lots of options from there uh and my opponent castles here which was bad as per me uh computer saying king f1 which is unlikely to be played uh maybe bishop could have been allowed but then uh, the pawn is hanging so opponent had to do something basically <laughs> maybe knight uh could have been played to f4 trying to improve the position of the knight hitting the center pawn as well that was one of the options maybe pawn forward and, and going for a pawn break but here my opponent decides to castle which make sure that the king is now in danger because these two pawns are overextended already and once either of them falls there's going to be an attack on the king pretty quickly here i play bishop e7 trying to hit the pawn uh, which is of course defended so not a threat and after rook to b1 i played this pawn forward now to c4 pushing the queen back because my opponent had in mind to play the next move as b4 and if i trade my opponent can take with another pawn and suddenly uh, opponent will be proceeding towards my queen side so i didn't want that to happen i didn't want any pawn breaks to happen there i played c4 pushing my opponent's queen backwards now queen goes to c2 and here computer suggesting can trade off the queens and put your uh, pawn on b3 develop your pawns but you still will be ahead because the opponent king side pawn structure is pretty weak instead in the game i went with queen d8 trying to hit the pawn now twice and it's defended only once so i thought of attacking that weakness here my opponent played g5 trying to exchange the pawns but that was bad because after i take and my opponent takes with the pawn or even the bishop eventually the h file would get opened up and that's what happens the h file is now opened i have a white target in front of me i'm going to hit with uh, the king with something now point is uh my bishop is kind of trapped here i cannot take because two pieces are defending it so i cannot trade here uh and if i play pawn forward my opponent can come in with the knight and eventually sack the knight as well because after pawn takes queen also comes in to attack with a check so as soon as this situation i observed i thought let me just rearrange my pieces and castle on the queen side because my queen side is pretty solid pawn structure is pretty nice the pawn chain 
in the center is controlling a lot of stuff, uh, blocking my opponent pawns, and there's no pawn break happening as well immediately. So I decided queen c7, preparing to castle on the queen side. Here my opponent plays knight g3, trying to improve position of the knights, and I castle queen side. Now, uh, here my opponent thought of playing pawn forward and breaking up the situation because after b4, I can take with n percent. But problem is, once I take, I'm opening up uh, the file for queen and rook, attacking my king. And you don't want that to happen. Uh, you don't want to open up the files uh, when opponent is willing to attack. So I didn't do that. Instead, I went with rook f uh, h3. My idea was to double up the rooks because the doubling up on the h file would always be helpful. It would build some attack and pressurize my opponent. Here, king to g2. And my opponent suddenly, who was trying to break through from the, uh, the queen side, has shifted his focus and shifted the rook, the king, on to g2, which means the opponent is feeling the pressure. And once that happens, you are always willing to build onto it. So that's why rook d to h8. Now, a4, my opponent trying to maybe play next uh, b5 and trade off the pawns and then get the rook active, get the queen here, get the other rook. Uh, sorry, from there, uh, getting the other rook onto maybe a uh, one to a eight, threatening some checkmating patterns. So uh, trying to build some attack from the king side, from the queen side. Meanwhile, I try and pursuing the attack on uh, the king side. So both the opponents, uh, both the players, trying to uh, create some attack from different sides of the board. I went with uh, f six now, so that opponent can take with the pawn, and after pawn exchanges. I would be pretty happy because my queen will also get active. Uh, my knights, which are stuck kind of, like one of the knight is going to be, uh, has to has to be moved in the next move uh, after uh, b5. So rather I will just make sure some pawn trade happens. I'll have, a, have an open f file as well for the attack. Uh, that would help me eventually. So f6 by me and here my open plays b5, trying to hit the pawn again and the knight. Now, uh, there's a couple of options I can trade here. Pawn takes pawn, and then open can take with the rook as well, can take with the pawn as well. Uh, and then suddenly you see queen coming too. So that can get tricky. Uh, computer suggesting to take on the pawn on uh, e5, uh, despite you lose the momentum and gave extra piece. Open says this, uh, computer suggests that this trade off is better for you, and you are still controlling after moves like this you are still ahead in the game somehow you are piece down but uh, you have capitalized on one pawn your center pawns are nice uh, you have uh, e4 coming next queen will be lining up on the knight uh, things look good for black but of course that is a computer move i don't want to give my knight for a pawn so instead i played a knight to a5 now knight to a5 does a couple of things a it defends uh, b7 as well Second, it is preparing to go on b3, cutting off this rook from ever attacking my king. Uh, and after there, uh, opponent takes on the pawn, I take back. And here my uh, opponent plays a bishop onto f4. Here my opponent is 2.5 ahead, ahead. And as soon as he plays bishop, uh, trying to place onto e5, his idea was if I trade here, uh, suppose trade happens, and he takes back with the knight, I can take back with the knight, and he takes back with the bishop and controls the squares. That was his main idea. And maybe if I get the bishop, bishops can be exchanged as well, or maybe you can get the queen in between and then try to hit on e6. So lots of uh, possibilities from there on can happen. So my opponent got the bishop onto f4. Also, the bishop wasn't developed in the game, so wanted to make use of it. This helps connecting both the rooks as well. So just in case my opponent is willing to uh, get the rook up, get the queen behind, and try and go for some attack. Uh, that is also possible. Here I take on the pawn on uh, g5 and open takes with the knight. And you can take with the bishop as well. Either is fine. But open takes with the knight and I take back the knight with the bishop. Bishop takes bishop. And after this, I give a check. Now it's important that when you are given a check, where do you move your pieces? Now, open's best move was to place king on h2. Uh, on uh, Sorry, not on h2. It's on h2 right, uh, g2 right now. Uh, opponent can place a rook on g1. Now, uh, the important thing is after rook 
ki the king on g1 there's no follow up checks happening because i cannot place my rook on h1 because knight is defending that square so it's completely safe to put the opponent king backwards uh, but when you have the rooks lined up there's always a pressure that made my opponent come to f3 now king f3 is unsafe completely and my next th thought process was how do i proceed with this attack now that i have got the advantage of course i can see the advantage later on when i'm an analyzing this game but yes i could feel that i have advantage because i have pulled this king out from safety and since it's out his next steps could be running away towards uh, the qu uh, the queen side now how do i control it to begin with i went with knight b3 i can yes give a check from the rook and opponent would be running towards the other side but i wanted to first make sure that there's no attack happening on my side of the board where my king is so putting my king to safety now if opponent has to pursue this he has to uh, take my knight for the rook and i'll just lose another pawn and i'll be safer and happy giving my knight for knight and pawn for a rook i'll be plus 1 because rook is plus 5 so that works in my favor plus this cuts off this gives me a chance to put my knight someday on d2 which can be a nice fork as well possibilities of course you have to always calculate but you have to be careful because the bishop reverse diagonal is controlling d2 so we'll have to wait and deflect this bishop from here so that then you can have a fork eventually part of thinking where you create some long-term plans making sure that the open file is also blocked so that there's no attacks happening on your end and now you can completely focus on attacking the opponent and after this my opponent plays queen g6 now again computer showing some tactics which is queen takes on e5 and after pawn takes you can take back with the knight and that's a fork which would win you the queen back uh, so that is one way so you get queen and a pawn uh, and you have good uh, center pawns already uh, and you can simply make sure that these uh, double rooks are also helping you eventually but instead in the game uh, i went with a knight to f8 now knight f8 does a couple of things a it hits the queen it defends my pawn on g7 that's a discovered defense generally we hear the term discovered attack but this is discovered defense uh, i'm just removing a piece out of the way defending it uh, and then uh, this knight also defends the pawn on e6 uh, so the base of my pawn chain is secure because if knight was supposed to be there and i play some other move i i'm losing the base of my pawn chain which would be bad so you don't want to never lose uh, the uh, base of your pawn chain and that's why knight f7 f8 there here uh, my opponent went back with the queen trying to maybe sack the rook next and then get the queen eventually out uh, uh, taking and taking and then takes back with the queen and then line up uh, trying to exchange queens maybe eventually because he was feeling the pressure there uh, and as you see uh, as soon as the queen goes back the game is uh, six points in the favor of black here because now my last piece which was not being used in the attack uh, which is the queen gets into the action from f7 uh, remember i had an option to give a check from uh, rook f8 would have led my opponent to move aside and my queen wouldn't have come into action but here uh, eventually after clearing the knight out which was attacking the queen and defending the pawn also made the way for queen coming to f7 and hitting a check so always nice to explore these ideas while playing uh, and my opponent plays king g4 which is further bad because you are pulling your king towards the center of the board why would you do that you should play it backwards uh, instead if opponent would have gone back then of course i can uh, either go with a uh, rook to uh, h3 or i can even play a knight here on to uh, h7 and then hitting the bishop eventually so uh, lots of ideas of course from there once you are controlling squares and gaining momentum towards the opponent's uh, side uh, but instead in the game my opponent played king uh, to uh, g4 and after king g4 i went with knight h7 hitting the bishop here my opponent tries to defend the bishop and after that i played g5 counter that because now if you take of course i can take and then a rook will come and give you a nasty checkmate eventually uh, if you move 
backwards. I take this with the queen and then you go back for the behind, which was your actual square earlier. So pawn hits the bishop and what my opponent does is save the bishop and get checkmated on uh, h4. Rook h4, a beautiful checkmate. Uh, queen controlling the f, rank, f file, uh, the rook controlling the h file, uh, and now uh, the fourth rank as well. And rook is saved with the pawn, which is guarded with the knight. Amazing checkmate, I felt. Uh, felt very happy after this checkmate. Uh, and yeah, it was a nice game. Controlling a lot of stuff, controlling the attack from opponent, building my own, and then wrapping, wrapping it up with... A move like knight to uh, f8 in between, then getting my queen active onto f7 and then checkmating on g4. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel, please, if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow again with some interesting content. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.